It's October, it's Halloween, so in this video I'll show you how to make a witch candy game inside of Scratch and it's surprisingly easy. This will be a single episode tutorial, so let's jump, or in this case, fly right in. It's been over a year since I last posted a game tutorial on this channel, which is crazy. Of course, I pre executed numerous Halloween tutorials like the Google Halloween game, Ghostbusters, and even a Halloween platform. Be sure to check them out if you want to create those awesome games. Alright, enough of that, so let's get started on making this game. You can find the link to the starter project in the description below and all the necessary assets will be available there. Of course, you are free to add, change or remove anything according to what you want. Alright, enough of that, so let's actually start coding. So let's start off with this witch. So first of all, you can click on this thumbnail sprite and hide it, that's not necessary. So click on this which and first of all it's actually called the Y movement and it's really really simple drag the wing green flag block forever grab a if statement if key up arrow pressed we need to change our Y 3 duplicate it change this to down arrow and change Y by negative 3 and if you run it now you'll be able to move your character and it's really really slow so let's change it to something like 7. So another thing we need to do is animating the sprite because it's just boring when you look at this. So if you go to costumes of this witch we got 3 costumes which we could look. So again it's really easy. When green flag click. We need to just to make sure go to front layer. And we need to forever, next costume, and we need to add a small delay because we don't need to switch costumes this fast. So let's add a small delay of 0.15 seconds. And now boom, we got our animated witch and now you'll be able to move your witch up and down. So now we are kind of done with the witch and now we'll be switching on to the background. So to create that make sure you click on this background sprite and we'll be having three different costumes. So this is the first costume, second costume and the third costume and we got duplicates of each and every costume. To record this scrolling background I'll be using Rift Patch's scrolling background tutorial because it's really really easy. So if you want to learn in depth of what I'm doing here you can check out that tutorial. And don't worry I'll be briefly explaining what each block does so yeah. Let's just start coding. And first of all, let's make all the required variables. First one is called camera x for all sprites. Camera y for all sprites. And we make an x variable and really important for this sprite only because we need our clones to get their own variable. Got x, screen x for this sprite only. And the scroll speed. Again for this sprite only. So you could hide all of these variables because they aren't really necessary. So when green flag click. So this would determine how fast the background moves. So first let's set a default speed of 0.5. So this will be the background which is farthest away from the camera. And we need to switch costume for our first costume. And then we need to set our X to 0. And then we need to create clone of myself. So we need to switch to our duplicate costume which is the next costume. And then set our X to 480. So now since our clone is made, we could broadcast a new message called start cloning. And when that is broadcast, we need to grab a forever loop and set our screen X. So grab some operators, it will be our minus and our times. So it's x minus camera x times our scroll speeds. So then we need to set our x to grab a mod times operator and then minus, minus 480 which is the screen size. And then we need to get a mod value which is the reminder of screen x mod 480 time 2 and now we could just set x to this 
So all right, this would set our x-axis. So now it code our y-axis. So for that, drag set y variable, subtract it by zero. So we get a negative value into camera y times scroll speed. So now we could go back to our width sprite, drag a wing reflect, click block. Forever, we need to change our camera x by, let's say, 5 maybe. And now if you click on the green flag, you'll be seeing we got this crawling background. So you could change it to something like 10 to get more faster movement, but we'll be returning for this, but for now, it works. So you could duplicate this background sprite. And click on costumes, delete the first and this costume and delete the third one and this one, it's duplicate. Switch costume to the second one and then next costume. Do the same thing, but the background three. Delete the first one, it's duplicate. Second one, the second one's duplicate. Switch costume to three and next costume. So click on background two. So we need to change our scroll speed to its individual thing. So let's say one maybe. And here, let's say maybe 1.5. So our background two, we need to click on that, go to front layer, click on background three, go to front layer. And then you can see we got this smooth scrolling background. Of course, we'll be returning for this, but for now, your code should work and it should display this scrolling background. And if it doesn't, make sure to check the code again. So now let's code our main thing, the candies. Drag a ring green flag, click block, and first of all, we need to actually hide because we will be creating clones. And now let's make a new variable called scope. And first of all, set our scope to zero. So you could actually show the scope area because we'll be using it, change it to large readout, keep it on the center. And first of all, we need to kind of wait two seconds so our player could at least breathe before playing it. So forever, we need to create clone of myself and we don't need a lot of clones at once. So we need to wait. Pick random from, let's say 0.5 to 1.5. Of course, you could change this according to your preference. This would add a small delay in between making clones. Once that's done, we need to grab a winner start as a clone block and we need to go to our X, which is 240. And Y, we need to pick random from negative 175 to 175. So the X240, which means it's on the rightmost corner and it will pick randomly from Y value from negative 175, which would be right below to 175 so it will pick randomly any value and then we need to actually show our sprite set our size to 20 by default because it's a really large sprite risk costume to this thing so you could just rename it as candy we could switch costume to candy and then grab a repeat until block touching grab o Repeat until touching a witch sprite. All our X position is lesser than negative 240. Which means if you are touching the edge. We need to kind of give a rotate effect. We need to of course move our candy. So by adding a negative value, it will move from right to left. So when I start as a clone, you could of course drag and go to front layer. So it would stay at the front. So like I can see our candy kind of stops when it starts the witch or at the edge. We don't need that to happen. Let's drag when I start as a clone block, drag a forever if statement. So if we are touching the witch, we need to start sound. So of course this sound would be there on your starter project. Finger snap, you could use any sound you want. We need to change our score by one. We need to add a small kind of animation. We need to repeat 10. Change our size by 5. Change our ghost effect by 10. So it will increase the size and disappear, which you'll be able to see. And then, of course, finally, we need to delete this clock. Duplicate the same thing. But if our exposition is lesser than negative 240, we need to start sound crunch 
instead of changing our score we need to create a new variable called health or lives anything you want so we need to change our health by negative one so we don't need this animation we could just throw it off place it under the if statement so if our candy touches the wish we got this really cool animation and if our candy touches the edge it just disappears so now we'll be actually coding the health so you might see a sprite called health and when we fly click we need to set health to a default of five so in this costume we got five lives which you can use so five four three two one so we need to set our health five first we need to switch costume to our first costume then we need to show go to x69 m46 and then we need to forever in a switch costume to join and just press the backspace don't enter any value and we need to join it by health so it will switch for five four three two one so for that we need to go for a stop screen sprite when green flag click we need to forever grab a statement grab a o equals or lesser than so if our health is lesser than zero or our health is equal to zero so for now if our health is lesser than zero or equals to zero let's set health to zero so when we need to receive zero we need to kind of stop all so just drag the stop all button see three two one zero so our whole game just stops so again we need to click on the green flag to play again so it's kind of annoying where you have to click the green flag every time our game stops so we actually can create a kind of loop so for that we need to remove the stop all and set our health back to five and we could actually set our score back to zero and broadcast new message called restart and when i receive restart we could go to our front layer repeat five grab a show block wait 0.1 seconds hide and we need to wait again 0.1 seconds so this will create a cool animation something like this and then once it's done we need to broadcast start so only this code will not help to make a loop so we need to replace every green flag clicked block to when I receive stop so replace each and if you click on the green flag nothing would happen and that's because we did not broadcast something to happen when green flag is clicked so when green flag is clicked we could simply broadcast stop we need to stop our scripts when the restart animation is going on so for that we need to grab when I receive restart stop other scripts in this sprite copy the same thing for our background but of course drag and delete this clone block 2 copy this to background copy this to background 3 copy the same thing to our candy and also grab a high block and copy our same thing to our health but just to stop other script in this sprite and now we got this restart effect and then it kind of loops through if we lose our game which is really really handy so there are some more other stuff we need to do so very first thing we need to do is animating our white posture so for that click on which when i receive start we need to go to front layer and we need to go to backward one layer i'll say y and then we need to set our camera y to zero and then we need to forever set our y to set y to go for background and drag this block to our width sprite camera y times scroll speed and we need to duplicate the same thing to change our y blocks and then change this to 3 and here negative 3 and then we need to change our camera y by 3 minus scroll speed duplicate the same thing and change this to minus 3 so when I just say start forever if or lesser and equal so if our camera y is lesser than 0 
or if our camera y equals to zero, we need to set our camera y to zero and duplicate the same thing. If our camera y is greater than 42 this time, y 42 because that's our maximum y position, 42 or equals to 42, we set our camera y back to 42. So make sure this should be when I receive start. So now it could go all the way down and it would just set it back to Y. So I said I'll be coming back to this change camera X. So now we need to kind of make it hard so when our score increases. So to do that, we need to click on this switch sprite, go for this change camera X. And there we need to drag a plus 5 block. And then we need to divide our score by 5. Now you need to duplicate this block and we don't need this, you could completely get rid of this too. Those are really not necessary. Change our Y by this time, change it to 10. Duplicate the same thing by this time, drag a minus operator because we need to change it to 0. And this would give a minus value. And now if we duplicate the same thing to our candy, and when I change x by minus 10, we could just drag this block right here. And now if we test our code, we could move up and down. We got this growing background. And I guess see it gets progressively fast when our score increases. So you could actually share our scope. It's 10 right now, 11. And I can see it's really fast when our score increases, which is really cool. And then boom, it restarts. So we need to add some effects to make it cool. So if you click on this Fox Sprite, so I have pre coded all the things you need on the starter project. Why? Because I showed you how to make this on one of my other tutorials. So if you want to know how to make this, make sure you check that out. But yeah, it's pre coded. So on here, we could just remove this. When we in fact click block to when I receive start, and I receive start. So this is only for the fog sprite, so yeah, it's pre-coded. And we also got this overlay, so when we in fact click, or when I receive start in this matter, we need to go to our front layer, and we need to set our ghost effect. So let's show it first. Set our ghost effect to like 80. So now if we run the game again, now we got this really cool atmospheric effect. So you could say go to front layer and let's say like go forward 1000 layers so we could make sure this is the frontmost layer. So as you see these two adds a nice touch to our game. So yeah this is our witch candy game in scratch. So if you're watching this far the video you're probably enjoying the content so make sure to give this video a like and consider subscribing for more awesome video. And make sure to check out this video where I show you, of course, how to make the Google Halloween game inside of Scratch. No add-ons, no mods, just inside of Scratch, which is crazy. So yeah, see you in the next one.